All right, my friends, I want to have a Miami Heat conversation with a guy who uh, I'm thrilled to bring him on for his Dono Daily debut. And I, I'm not going to be a stranger. I'm going to be uh, tracking this guy. It's going to be borderline stalkerish how much we track him down to bring him on the show. Ricky J. Mark here from the Five Reasons Sports Network joins us. Ricky, so happy to see your face, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you, my man? I'm doing really well. It's great to see you. It's great to hear you. Uh, so, you know, Ricky, I've been, you know, I've been waxing poetic and sometimes ranting like a crazy person about the Dolphins and the Canes to start the show. But I, I want to get this to Miami Heat. And before we dive into some summer league stuff, a player that I find myself not talking about a whole lot, and that's probably to his benefit because I don't have a whole lot of nice things to say about this player because there have been so many positive stories coming out. What's your expectation for Tyler Hero this coming season? Because I, I thought he definitely took a step back from the rookie year to the second year. What are you expecting from Hero in year three? So, for starters, I'm not expecting a Hero. Uh, I'm expecting a solid player that plays hard on both sides of the ball, that is aware of his limitations both physically and talent-wise. I don't expect Gordon Hayward 2.0 to come out and average 27 and seven at the shooting guard position. I just expect a solid young prospect who might not even be old enough to drink yet. I think he's just barely old enough to drink. Um, who's going to just play hard, play well. And I think, and this is just a random prediction, I guess. I think fatherhood is going to really, at least I would hope, uh, mellow him out a little bit and force him to focus on that which really matters in terms of his basketball career and life outside of basketball i think he's going to be okay i'm not expecting anything huge from him whatever we can get out of tyler hero this coming season great but i don't expect for him to have a a sophomore or a junior slump like he did last season i like that i, I like to hear that uh l let's talk about some of the big performers in summer league uh, a guy that again i don't think i've talked enough about is Marcus Garrett, who mm -hmm. we're you know expecting on a on a two way deal, but the two way guys can play up to fifty games, so we might see him a you know relatively speaking a lot, especially early in the year. What kind of a role do you think he can play, and how good can Garrett be? Well, I think it should be said that this team, before Jimmy showed up, is a team was a team built essentially by G leaguers and and um, and journeymen. Marcus Garrett has demonstrated his abilities on defense to be almost practically NBA caliber. The guy, you do not want to be lazy off the dribble with this guy. You do not want to uh, not bring your lunch when you, play with the, when you play against this guy. It wouldn't shock me if they eventually gave him a, a bona fide straight-up contract as opposed to a two-way deal. Because if there's one thing this Heat team, this Heat franchise, has prided itself on, it's been defense. And Marcus Garrett brings that. He not, not only plays defense, but he, he plays hard. And that is something that if you're Eric Spolster, you're going to want to play a lot. Take Gabe Vincent, for example. Uh, much has been said about Gabe's uh, pre-Olympic limitations. But there's one thing you can't take away from him. It's his ability to play hard. And we saw that on multiple occasions this season. If you play hard, you're going to get minutes on this team. That's just how we've always seen it. Now, I want to, Manny, flash up that comment from Ninja Viking 407 because I don't want to ignore the elephant in the room of Heat Twitter over the last week or so. Uh, can someone explain how UD gets a roster spot? He's a king, but wouldn't he serve us better on the staff? Now, let me throw a couple shout-outs there because we get that question from Ninja. I have these conversations a lot with one of, uh, with one of our viewers and listeners, Marla, who it's her birthday, by the way. So everyone send a happy birthday to Marla. Happy birthday. Very, very happy birthday. And she also, like uh, Ninja Viking, is not so happy about UD having a roster spot. Now, Ricky, um, I am a I, – I pray at the church of Udonis Haslam. I love the guy. If, if he wants to hold down a roster spot until he's literally Pat Riley's age, I would not yeah. complain about that. You know, whether, it, whether you consider it right now to be the 14th roster spot or the 15th roster spot – I am more than happy to give that place to UD, uh, but do you have any reservations about that? Uh, naturally, I do have reservations about a player who hasn't been legitimately productive since midway through the second term of Barack Obama, if we're being absolutely <laughs> honest. I um, mean, he hasn't had a legitimate double-double since I think LeBron was midway through his time here in Miami. 
and I understand that Heat fans have a lot of nostalgia. You know, he's he's a he's a relic of the Dwayne Wade era that many Heat fans want to hold on to, and I understand yeah. that emotional attachment. I do believe me, I get it. I I understand that fully. However, there is a concern where if potentially there is a another diamond in the rough type player out there that could have an opportunity. Uh, you know, sometimes careers are based on just somebody getting an opportunity. You know, Chris uh, Chauncey Billups wouldn't have the arguably Hall of Fame career he has now if somebody gave him a chance. You know, this was a guy who was well regarded uh, heading coming out of college, but was a journeyman for a while. Mm-hmm. Udonis Haslam, I understand his role. He's not productive anymore. I mean, we we saw how he Twitter loved that two minutes that he gave against Philly last season, where he got himself ejected and punk Dwight Howard but that's not why they won that game I mean look I get the emotional attachment that a lot of Heat fans have but I think at least for me personally it's my job to be to think rationally about a lot of these issues and I think Udonis Haslam if there's nobody better that you can get right now for that 15th spot, which I understand is a spot that generally doesn't contribute anyways. Do, do you fine. think there's anybody better? And I, I don't want to hold your feet to the fire here, but is there, no, you know, of course, bring it. Is, is there somebody you think, you know what, this might be someone right now who's out there who could be worthy of UD spot? So right now, I'm not exactly sure. I think we're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen with the buyout market. Because we just witnessed a, a, a pretty interesting trade between, I believe it was the Grizzlies and the Clippers, in which Patrick Beverly... Uh, and a few other players, uh, Rajon Re- Rondo and a few other players. Uh, well, I see you, King. I see no you. Don't guts. worry. Don't <laughs> worry. Um, where a bunch of those guys went over to um, Memphis in exchange for uh, Eric Bledsoe. Now, if, and I, I'm not the insider. Remember, the insider's on Five Reason Sports. That's Greg, that's Adam Barai, and that's Ethan. But if Pat Bev ends up a free agent, you know, that could be a spot worth considering. But other than that, I you know, if they want to keep throwing money at Udonis Haslam, by all means, go for it. I will say this, though, and this is one last thing when it comes to uh, Udonis Haslam. Sure. Uh, don't underestimate the, uh, um, the, the presence of a player on a locker room because in the 2013-2014 regular season, the Indiana Pacers were hell-bent on beating the Heat. That season, they were the best team in the league for a while. And then Danny Granger, who had been coming back from a knee injury, he came back, and then they traded him. They got rid of him, even though he wasn't contributing, and that destroyed the locker room because he was the only he was the only link to the Reggie Miller era, ironically wow. enough. So it's it's something to consider, but at some point we're gonna have to say en- enough is enough. Uh, Udonis Haslam is forty, turning forty one, but his age isn't even the age that I'm concerned about with regards to this roster. It's the starting lineup potentially. Good point. So, and based on, uh, and, and you may have given a little implication of your feeling there because uh, a lot of the additions Riley has made are players in their 30s here, uh, but how much better have the Heat gotten and do you think they are now contenders in the East? Like, how much better have they gotten from last year? Okay, so what I'll say about that is, in my opinion, I think the Heat made the offseason moves that they should have made last season. Is that enough? I'm not sure because you're still talking about Brooklyn. You still got who knows what Philly's going to be this season if Ben Simmons isn't going to come back. Uh, You've still got Boston, who honestly, until they show me that when healthy, they're not as good as they should be. There's still someone to be concerned about. You've still got Milwaukee, the defending champions. And that's already, I think, about three or four teams. I don't know if Miami is already in that position. But as I've said before, and I know um, Michael from our network uh, agrees with me on this, if Victor Oladipo comes back and is reasonably healthy, then I think the conversation changes a little bit. But right now, I think Miami's done what they were supposed to in order to stay level and to not be left in the dust. But I'm not exactly, I'm not totally convinced that it's the kind of lineup that will tear through the Eastern Conference. I have always said throughout our streams and throughout our post-game and pre-game shows that this Heat team has a puncher's chance, if healthy, but, you know, we we have to face the music, and as Julian Ramos says, they still lack size. You no, know, it's uh, true. It, P.J. Tucker is six foot five, playing power forward. Uh, you know, that's not getting you past Denver fully healthy. 
I, I appreciate your time, man, and the honesty, even though a couple of people uh, wanted me to shut you down with the UD comments. I, I, I had to let you say hey, your piece. Look, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but look, I think I think what I will say, tell you what, how about this, right? I'll leave uh, I'll, I'll leave on a positive note. Ooh, okay. Miami, Miami reminds me very much of those hardcore 90s Knicks and Heat teams that were a hard out for most teams. Okay? I agree. Any team that has to play this Heat team in the playoffs come next May or whenever, it's going to be a tough out. And if they don't bring their lunch, Miami could mess around and upset one or more teams. Fantastic. Make sure you so follow that's him something on. To, that's something to think about. Absolutely. Make sure you follow this man on Twitter at Ricky J. Mark. And hey, if you have anything to promote, Ricky, any work you're doing this week on the network, let people know where they can find you. Ah, wow. Uh, As of right now, I'm chilling. I'm just, you know, I'm just relaxing at the moment. It's almost like an unofficial vacation right now, but I, I believe we've got some stuff coming up. I think tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, a certain someone is celebrating a, a birthday or something. I forget who, who it is. I, oh, man, is it? Is it Alana? I think it's Alana. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad you told I, me that I now because so. I, I I did not know this. So now now I, I can feel like I'm actually a nice person when I wish her a happy birthday tomorrow because yeah. I usually yeah. miss birthdays. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. But, yeah, other than that, I'm just chilling. Just stay tuned to us. I mean, you know, you're doing a great job, Dono. I'm happy to see you doing this. I'm happy to Thank see you. you have this platform and, you know, keep up the good work. I'm happy to be on here with you. We're having a great time. And honestly, it's people like you and all the great guests we have on that really make it go, man. To be able to to be able to lean on so many expert opinions from the network, it makes my job very easy. Ricky, thank you so much, man. Enjoy your night. Thank you. All right, you too, man. Awesome, awesome stuff there by Ricky J. Mark.